Hi guys, and welcome back to the Yogi Blair YouTube channel. I'm excited because today we have a 60 minute stress fracture slow flow for you. And I'm making this class because a good friend of mine reached out to me today and said that she has a stress fracture in her foot and she's an avid runner, she's very physically fit and it's sort of driving her insane that she's not able to do the things that she normally does because of this injury in her foot. So I wanted to create this class for her and for anybody else that might have a similar injury to kind of give you an idea of what a full 60 minute yoga class is like if you've never taken a yoga class before um, and to give you an idea of some things that you might be able to modify in a class if you want to go to a studio, uh, if you do have an injury so you know um, to modify planks and how to modify other poses so that they are safe for that injured foot or whatever. So about stress fractures, like I said, my friend that called me today, hers is in her foot and she's an avid runner and stress fractures are very common in runners because stress fractures occur when there is a lot of impact. So when we're running, or when you're running, because I don't run, um, when you're running, your feet are hitting the pavement or the treadmill over and over and over again, and over time that stress causes the bones to crack. The most common place for a stress fracture to occur is in the second and third metatarsals of the foot. Now, just like in our hands, we have carpals and we have metacarpals. The carpals, as you know, that's where carpal tunnel happens when that nerve is compressed. Um, but if you feel your wrist, you'll feel that cluster of bones there at the wrist um, and sort of above the wrist. And then the long bones that extend from there are the metacarpals, same as your foot. Right under your ankle, you'll feel at the base of your foot, there's a little cluster of bones there. Those are the tarsals. And then the metatarsals are the long bones that extend towards each of the phalanges. And if you have a stress fracture in one of your metatarsals, you'll probably be able to find it by running your thumbs or your fingers along those bones and wherever it hurts, that's probably where your stress fracture is. Another common place to get a stress fracture, if you, especially if you're a runner, is in the heel. Um, you can also get them in the tibia or the shin bone. And um, that's not to be confused with shin splints. Now, I thought that they were the same thing for the longest time, but shin splints are inflammation of the tissues around the tibia or shin bone, um, whereas a stress fracture is a crack in the bone itself. So if you run your finger along your shin, if you have pain, if you feel that pain all the way up and down your shin, it's probably shin splints and it's inflammation of the tissue. If you have pain in your shin and you run your finger along and you feel pain in one certain spot, then you may have a stress fracture. Uh, that being said, if you think you might have a stress fracture or another sort of injury, please make sure to seek medical advice before turning to my videos for guidance. I am not a medical professional. This is in no way medical advice. It's important to get a proper diagnosis for your injury so that you can heal properly. So please make sure that you see a doctor and you ask about physical activity. If they tell you that you have a stress fracture, ask them, is it okay to do yoga right now? Is it okay to do whatever your normal routine is? Um, and then I also, uh, there is a sort of a phase that when we're injured, we go through in order to reach a recovery period where we can function the way that we did before as athletes or people that are just physically active. So the first phase is the injury phase. So this is from the time of diagnosis and it lasts for about four to six weeks. So this isn't from the time that you feel the pain or you feel like you might have been injured. This is from the time that you go to the doctor and get a diagnosis of a stress fracture or whatever other injury you may have. Um, and from that time of diagnosis, the injury period is about a four to six week period. And in this time, you might get a cast or a walking boot. If you have a stress fracture, you might have um, crutches, depending on where the injury is and how severe it is. Um, your doctor might give you some physical therapy. 
Uh, they might tell you that it's okay to do yoga that day. However, I personally tell my students that from the time that you're diagnosed with any sort of injury, I tell people to give it at least two weeks to just rest from all of your physical activity. Um, our bodies are always telling us things and they're always communicating with us. And like I say in almost all of my group classes, anytime you feel numbness, pain, pinching, tingling, those are signals from your body that it doesn't really care for what you're doing. And maybe we need to ease off of a posture a little bit, or maybe we need to come out of it all together and do something else totally different. Um, it's important to listen to our bodies when we feel pain so that we don't injure ourselves any further. And that's not to say that if you have an injury then you weren't listening to your body and I'm scolding you. Um, it happens, it happens to all of us. And it's just important from here on out to make sure that we take care of this injury so that it doesn't get worse. Um, so during this injury period of four to six weeks, I recommend that people just rest for two weeks. Don't do anything other than go to work, take the kids to school, let the dogs outside, just rest. Rest that injury, give it time to heal. Uh, and then after a two week period, if you feel like you're ready to get moving and if your doctor okays it, maybe start with some restorative yin classes or regular yin classes. Yin classes are a lot of seated posture so you're not putting weight on these areas that are commonly injured with stress fractures. Um, and it's a lot of forward folding, like a, a wide legged forward fold or you know a seated forward fold. And while you might not be getting a strenuous workout in, you're still working the deep tissues of your body that really need stretch. And it might get you comfortable going to a studio because restorative classes are classes where you can just kind of sit and close the eyes, nobody's really looking around, nobody's really paying attention to you. And you can get comfortable going to the studio with those classes until we can build our practice back up. Um, so that's my suggestion in the injury period. Then we move on to the recovery period. And once that four to six, four to six window is done with the injury phase, we move to the recovery phase, which lasts about three to four weeks. And this is where we still have a little bit of an injury, but we're on the mend, we're healing. So now's a time where if you're a runner, you maybe you add walking back into your routine. Um, if you're a seasoned yogi, maybe you start adding your slow flow classes in like today's. Um, just gently getting back into the swing of things so that we don't add any more stress to those areas that already might be a little weaker. Um, during this period, continuing physical therapy, um, and again, just checking in with your doctor anytime you need to. And this is also a good time to explore why the injury happened. Um, we don't really think about that a lot when we're injured. We just say, oh, I got hurt, and then we get better and we move on. But I personally like to know why things happen the way that they happen. Why do I have a stress fracture in my foot? Was it my shoes? Am I not wearing the proper shoes? Did I need new shoes? Did they not have enough support? Were they worn out? Do I need more calcium in my diet? There's a lot of things that could cause this to happen that maybe we could fix in order to prevent it from happening in the future. So maybe taking time to explore those things as well. After we're in the recovery period, then we move on to the build period, which our injury should be healed but now we're building up upon our practice or our normal exercise routine. So this lasts about four weeks from the time recovery ends and we use this four week period to build slowly back up to what we used to be doing. So starting out, maybe you were walking in the recovery period. If you're a runner, maybe now we add a little bit of jogging in. Maybe we jog a mile or two depending on how many miles you run um, and then we work our way up into our practice which is the fourth phase which is back into our normal routine if you're a seasoned yogi going back to your power classes if you're an avid runner 
going back to running what you used to, just being mindful that in these first couple weeks of being fully recovered, it still might not be the same. And if there's any pain, if there's any issues, listening to the body and being careful, which brings us to our practice today. So we'll go ahead and get started. Proper attire for slow flow. I think for me personally, I, again, I, any kind of flow class, I like form fitting pants just so I can move fluidly and not get caught up in fabric. This shirt is a little loose, but I wore it to teach in today because I think it's super duper cute. I got it um, on a Facebook boutique called Jules and James. Um, so yeah, if you want added to that group, let me know because I'll add you and you can have cute clothes like I do. So let's get started. Let's get the hair out of the face. If it's not already, And we'll get started in a seated posture today and I'll get my timer here started so that we can get a full hour class in. So this is kind of kind of be a basic slow flow that also is mindful of those of us that might have stress fractures in the feet or the shins. So let's find an easy seat. Now, a lot of people cross their legs here, but especially if we have a stress fracture, this can cause some tension and compression in places that we don't want it to. And it's not traditional sukhasana or easy seat. Easy seat, we bring the sole of a foot, whichever foot you prefer, to the inside of the thigh. And then we bend that other knee, bringing that sole of the foot on the outside of the shin. So we're stacking the shins so that they're parallel, one in front of the other. And we don't wanna move the flesh away from the sits bones here. We wanna make sure that we're sitting on the flesh of the sits bones, engaging the muscles of the pelvic floor, engaging the abdominal muscles to sit up nice and tall. Our palms can face on the knees facing upward if you feel like you need to channel some energy or if you need some grounding. If you have too much energy, you can put the palms on the knees facing down. And when you feel ready, just beginning to close the eyes here. In other workout classes, we typically walk in ready to go. But in yoga, we take a few minutes here to center, to fully arrive. I like to tell my students, give yourself permission to fully arrive right here. Letting go of your work week, letting go of this day, letting go of things that annoy you, letting go of things you might be excited for in the future and just allowing yourself to be fully present. And I think a lot of times we don't really realize how much we are not fully present. I didn't realize what it was like to be fully in the present moment until I started meditating and practicing mindfulness. And I like to help people get centered by bringing them to an awareness of the different sheaths or layers of the body. We think of ourselves as one entity, one being, but we actually have many, many layers. And the first layer is the physical body and this is called the Anamaya Kosha. Kosha means sheath or layer. So letting go of any stimulus around you, letting go of sounds you might hear outside, cars passing, kids playing, bringing your awareness just to your physical body. Maybe doing a body scan here, noticing from the top of the head going down the face, down the neck, traveling all the way down to the toes, noticing sensation. You might feel a tingling sensation at the crown of the head or in the palms of the hands. This is completely normal when we start to bring awareness to the body. And maybe focus 
focusing on those areas of injury that we might have. I taught a class the other week and I invited everybody to notice areas that might have been sore or injured or tense. And I asked them to try and accept those areas of the body the same way we accept the areas that aren't injured. We view our body as dysfunctional when it's injured. We view that piece of our body as not working or inferior. Try to accept this just as you would any other part of the body that doesn't hurt you. Not labeling it good or bad. Inviting this as your experience right now. Not thinking that, well, in a couple weeks after I do more yoga, my injury will go away and then I'll be happy with my body. Being happy with it right now as it is and accepting our injuries, honoring that space, promising to take care of our bodies in any postures today, knowing that if anything hurts, if anything doesn't feel right, you do not have to do it. My words are merely suggestions in your practice. You can do whatever feels right to you. And then bringing our awareness from the physical body to the energetic body. Noticing how you feel energetically. And our breath is what provides our body with energy. So maybe focusing on the breath. Breathing in and out of the nose. deep diaphragmatic breaths, filling the belly, feeling the diaphragm expand, filling the top half of the lungs, feeling the collarbones separate, exhaling, feeling the collarbones settle, the chest settle, and then the navel tracks back towards the spine. Noticing what it feels like to sit and just focus on the breath. And if you like to practice with ujjayi breath, or you wanna try practicing with ujjayi breath, it's a breath control we use a lot in yoga. We breathe in and out of the nose, we constrict the back of the throat to create an audible sigh. Ujjayi translates to ocean breath, creating the sound of the ocean. This breath increases concentration in our yoga practice and also builds heat. So if you want to build some heat, if you want to work up a sweat, you can use Ujjayi breath to warm up the body. And if you like to practice with setting an intention, you can do that now. In yoga, we sometimes set intentions for our practice something to bring us back, a word, a phrase, a mantra, picking something that resonates with you. And if nothing resonates to you, that's fine. You can dedicate your practice to somebody or you can just practice without doing anything. You can gently flutter the eyes open. We'll bring the hands beside us. Inhale, lifting the arms up overhead, gaze can follow. Exhale, bringing the hands to heart center. If you set an intention, maybe imagining tucking that intention away at the heart center, knowing that it's there whenever you need it. Let's do that again. Inhale, lifting the arms up overhead, exhaling hands, heart center. Now that we're centered in our practice and we're fully present, we begin to limber. 
which is just gently warming up the body before starting our practice. So let's bring our hands to the knees and let's just bring our right ear to our right shoulder, waking up the cervical spine here of the neck and bringing the left ear to the left shoulder. Maybe finding some half circles, rolling ear to shoulder. Or if you want to take full neck rolls, you can do that as well. If it hurts, you do not have to do it. And reversing the direction when you feel ready. Coming back through center, let's bring that right ear back to the right shoulder. Maybe this time you take your right hand and bring it towards the left ear. You can stay here. You can take that left hand and walk it around. If you walk it to the front or behind you, you're going to find a spot where you feel the most intense stretch. Holding there a moment, imagining anytime you feel tension, inhaling relaxation and exhaling any of that tension away, sending breath to areas of tension, inhale, letting go, bringing the neck up through center. Exhale, bringing the left ear to the left shoulder, taking that left hand to the right ear, walking that right hand around. And we'll release our head. Let's walk the hands out in front of us. Finding a forward fold. Anytime we fold forward, thinking of folding with a flat back, a lot of times we arch our back to fold to try to get the forehead closer to the mat. We want to think about getting the belly button down first in any kind of forward fold. We'll inhale, coming up, switching the cross of the legs. Exhale, folding in again. Knowing anytime we switch sides, each side might be different and that's okay too. Most people's bodies aren't perfectly symmetrical. It's perfectly normal to be different from side to side. And again, not judging, not being angry that one side doesn't work the same way as the other. Inhale, coming back up. Let's send the legs long. And we're gonna inhale, finding our flat back, exhaling, thinking of getting that belly button down to the thighs first. Keeping the neck long here, not letting the head fall down, that immediately arches through the spine. Maybe inhaling, finding a little length, exhale, see if you can fold a little more. We'll inhale, coming back up, let's swing the legs around, we're gonna come onto hands and knees. And I'll face the same way that you are for this part and show you from the side. Untucking the toes so that the tops of the feet are flat on the mat unless that hurts you. Stacking the joints. So shoulders are right over the wrists, just like in your plank. Hips are right over the knees. And we're going to find cat cows here. So we inhale, drop the belly, the tailbone lifts, the gaze lifts for cow. Exhale, curling the spine, tucking the tailbone, bringing the gaze to the navel for cat. Inhale for cow. Exhale for cat. Moving with your breath here. Maybe finding some more fluidity, some more movement. Doing whatever feels right to you at any time. And after your last round, finding a neutral spine, we're going to send our right leg behind us for a spinal extension. Now, normally I have my students first flex the foot, putting the ball of the foot on the mat, stretching out the calf. But if you have a stress fracture here, or if you're in a boot or anything like that, that might not work. So just feeling free to lift that foot up. Maybe it doesn't feel good to flex the foot, so you don't have to. Um, you can just leave the foot in a neutral position. You can point or flex the foot 
If it feels okay, try to extend that left hand out. Now, if you don't have a lot of balance here and you feel a little wobbly, I'd rather you keep that left hand on the mat so that we don't risk falling and falling on that injured foot. So from here, if your hand's extended, we'll exhale, crunching that knee in, bringing the knee towards the elbow, inhaling, extending, trying to keep the hips square here, engaging the core, pressing through the shoulders, really waking up the body here. Maybe tapping back into that ujjayi breath if you want. And after your last round, bringing that hand down if it's lifted, bringing that knee to meet the left, and we'll extend the left foot behind us. So again, maybe it doesn't feel good to push through that foot. That's okay. Lifting the foot, lifting the arm if you want, if it doesn't feel good, keeping both the hands on the mat and we can just curl that knee in towards the nose using the abdominal muscles. Exhale, extend. Inhale, exhale, crunching it in. Inhale, exhale. And then after your last round, bringing that left knee to meet the right, we're just gonna press it back to our first down dog. So this shirt might, well, I can't show you proper form here, so let me just get that out of the way with all that fabric. So from our tabletop, maybe walking your hands out a little further. For our down dog, we wanna make sure that our Pointer, I'm sorry, our middle fingers are facing forward or slightly turned out. You'll be able to find out better once we're in down dog which one works best for you. Spreading the fingertips wide, pressing evenly through all 10 fingers, curling the toes if you're in a boot, just making sure that maybe you lift that leg, pressing it back to our first down dog. If you're in a boot here, you might need to bend that one knee. Usually I have people pedal the feet here. That might not feel good for you to pedal the feet and walk your dog just yet. If it does, feel free. So in down dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana, our shoulders are exteriorly rotated. The chest is falling down towards the thighs, making sure we're pressing into those hands. We're pulling the belly button in towards the spine so that the chest can fall. Head is heavy. Thighs have a gentle internal rotation and heels are reaching for but never have to touch the mat. Now from here we're done limbering and we're moving into our sequencing. I like to get the body fired up by doing sun salutations before moving on to my own sequencing. So we'll inhale looking forward at the hands. Let's step that right foot and then the left to meet the hands. And then we exhale, forward fold here. Again, folding belly, chest, chin with a flat back. Inhale for a half lift, hands can come to the shins or down to the mat. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rooting through the feet, we reach the arms up and rise. Gaze can follow the hands. Exhale, flat back as we fold. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, fold, plant the hands. We're gonna move through our first vinyasa here. So we step back to plank, shoulders over wrists. If this hurts the feet, drop the knees. And then we're gonna exhale and lower chaturanga. So we come forward on the toes, bringing the shoulders over the wrists. And then we curl those elbows in and we lower in one piece to the mat. So if the knees are bent here, you just lower down, inhaling for cobra, keeping the elbows bent, bottom half of the body stays on the mat, letting the shoulders open and fall back, opening the heart. Exhale, curl the toes, press it back, down dog. Inhale, look forward, this time we step the left foot and then the right to the top of the mat, 
Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, finding your half lift. Exhale to forward fold. Root the feet, inhale, reaching up, rising, maybe adding a little back bend here. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, flat back as we fold, Uttanasana. Inhaling, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plant the hands, stepping back to our plank or modified plank. Lowering Chaturanga on the exhale. Inhaling, Cobra. Exhaling, downward facing dog, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Let's inhale, looking forward at the hands, stepping the right foot and then the left. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for your half lift. Exhale, fold. Root the feet and rise. On the inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, flat back as we fold, Uttanasana. Inhaling, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, fold, planting the hand, stepping the right foot and then the left. Moving through your flow, doing whatever you need to do. Inhaling, Cobra. Exhaling, Downward Facing Dog. We'll inhale, looking forward, stepping the left foot now, and then the right. Exhale, fold. Inhaling for our half lift. Exhale to fold. Root the feet and rise on the inhale. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhaling for our half lift. Exhale, fold, plant the hands, step back to plank, moving through your flow. Lowering Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, maybe Cobra. Maybe Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's inhale, making our way to the top of the mat. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for your half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reaching up, rising. And this time, let's sink into chair. Utkatasana. This is Sun Salutation B. We just did A. Inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale, fold. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, fold, plant the hands, stepping that right foot back, lowering Chaturanga. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhaling, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Now we inhale, lifting the right leg, keeping the hip square here for Sun Salutation B. Exhale, stepping it through gently. Maybe framing the foot with the hands. We're going to spin that left foot so that it's at a 45 degree angle. Heel to heel alignment here. Getting that knee right over the ankle and when the base is steady, inhale to rise. Making sure our knees right over the ankle here. Making sure that the hips are square facing the front of the room or the front of the mat. Shoulders are away from the ears, maybe turning those pinkies in. Feeling nice and strong here. Inhale here. Exhale, bringing the palms to the mat, sweeping that leg back. Now, if your right foot is the one that's injured, maybe you want to do a three-legged flow. Coming onto the toes, lifting that leg and lowering. Inhaling for cobra or up dog. Up dog, our palms and the tops of our feet are the only things on the mat. That might be painful if your stress fractures in your foot. So be careful. Inhale, lifting the left leg. Exhale, sending it through. Setting up for warrior one on this side. Aligning the heels. Right foot's at a 45 degree angle. Bending into that front knee. Squaring the hips, steadying the base. Inhale, rise. Inhale, exhale, framing the foot, squeezing that leg back, moving through your flow however you wish. You can always skip flows and go straight to down dog. So 
So that was sun salutation B. I'll show you sun salutation C as well. Inhale, looking forward, stepping the left foot and then the right to the top of the mat. Exhale, fold. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, fold. Rooting through the feet. Inhale to rise, Urdhva Hastasana. And exhale, folding, Uttanasana. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, fold, planting into those fingertips. Step the right foot back and lower for a low lunge on Janayasana. Making sure that we walk our knee back so we're not directly on the knee joint. Our right hip flexor is melting towards the mat. We're sinking into this front knee here, making sure that we're stacking the knee over the ankle. Shoulders again away from the ears. Inhale. Exhale, frame the foot. Stepping that foot back and lowering chaturanga or modified chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Now we inhale, lifting the right leg. Exhale, sending it through, finding that low lunge again. Inhaling, exhaling. And on your next exhale, framing that foot, stepping now the left foot up to meet the right. Exhale, fold. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reaching up overhead. Exhale, folding Uttanasana. Inhaling, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding, planting the hands. And this time, we step the left foot back and lower. Inhale to rise. Checking in with our posture. Checking in if there's any pain anywhere. Being mindful. Floating the palms to the mat. Moving through a flow. Inhaling left leg lifts. Exhale sending it through. Low lunge. Anjane Asana. On your next exhale, bringing those palms to the mat, curling the back toes, stepping up to meet. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Let's plant the hands, step back. Moving through a flow, we'll meet in down dog. Now let's inhale, lifting the right leg in the air. Exhale, sending it through. Let's find that warrior one again. Aligning the heels, back foot at a 45 degree angle. Inhaling to rise. Squaring off the hips here. Imagining that our right hip is pulling back while our left hip is pulling forward. From here, we'll find pyramid or Parshvottanasana by inhaling, straightening the front leg. Exhale, reaching those arms out in front of you. Imagine sending energy through the fingertips. Reaching, folding with a flat back on the exhale. Now this might hurt in the hamstrings, especially for you runners. So your option here is to bring that back foot, shortening the stance. Still trying to square those hips off. They're gonna wanna dump to one side here. You can always put a little bend in that front knee as well to alleviate the tension on the hamstring. Now from here, we'll take our left hand, grounding it in on the inside of the foot. Inhale, lifting that arm up for a revolved triangle. Paribhritta Trikonasana. So making sure that we're on the same plane, making sure those hips are still square, not falling off to one side. Exhale, bringing that right hand down to frame the foot. Let's bend into that front knee, maybe widen that stance again. Inhaling to rise. Warrior one, Virabhadrasana one.
From here on the next exhale, floating the palms to the mat, either finding down dog or moving through a flow. If you notice, I roll over my feet when I'm in a cobra or up dog and I'm pressing it back to down dog, watch my feet. I roll over my feet, sometimes at the same time, sometimes one at a time. Don't try that if you have an injury in the foot or the ankle. If you have an injury there, pressing it back, you can always come to the knees. Maybe curl the toes and press it back, or maybe you just need to step it up and then step the other foot up. Just being careful. Now we'll inhale, lifting the left leg, exhale, sending it through, finding that warrior one on the side. Finding your drishti or your gaze, your focal point. And then we'll set up for that pyramid again. Inhale, straighten the front leg. Exhale, reaching forward. Holding here, engaging that core. Inhale, exhale. Folding in, maybe shortening that stance again. Still squaring off the hips. And from here, we ground into our right hand on the inside of the left foot. Inhale, lifting the left arm up. Trying to keep that base steady. Exhale, returning that hand to the mat. Maybe widening our stance again, bending into that knee. Inhaling, rising back, warrior one. Inhale, exhale, float the palms to the mat, sweeping that leg back. Now from here, let's inhale, lifting the right leg again, exhale, sending it through. We're going to find our warrior two. So now we spin that back foot so it's at a 90 degree angle instead of 45. So now we have heel to arch alignment here. Bending into that knee, opening this left hip, rising up, sinking into that knee, making sure knees over ankle again. Then we open the arms. Checking in with our knees, checking in with our stance. Soft shoulders. If your shoulders are coming up by the ears, maybe flipping the palms. Drishti's out over that front middle finger. And from here, we'll inhale, straightening the front leg. Exhale, hinging forward. We're going to find trikonasana or triangle. Reaching that hand either on the inside of the calf, coming to the shin, or coming to the mat. Drishti's up at the left middle finger, if available. Option to bind here. You can bring that hand behind the low back, bringing that right hand underneath the thigh. Maybe it reaches. If you bind, trying to open that left shoulder, bringing the gaze upward, opening the heart. Let's bend the knee. For extended side angle with a bind. Releasing your bind, that right hand can come on the inside of the foot, the outside of the foot, or we can bring our forearm to the thigh here, reaching the left arm up and over for Utita Parshva Kanasana. Gaze can be at the fingertips again. Trying to get that bicep by the ear, opening the shoulder.
checking in with the feet here, checking in with the shins. If anything hurts, being mindful, opening back up, warrior one. Now let's reverse our warrior, bringing our left hand to the back thigh, reaching that right arm, bringing that bicep by the ear. Let's bring both hands to the hips. We'll pigeon toe the feet. Maybe bringing our stance closer together. A good guesstimation of where your feet should be is bringing your hands out to a T. And your feet should theoretically be under the hands. Might help if I look at the camera. Good Lord. Okay. Bringing the hands to the hips. Inhale, finding length, lifting out of that spine again. Exhaling, folding with a flat back. Hands can stay on the hips. They can come to the ankles. They can come in front of the face. Over time, we're working to get the crown of the head to the mat. It doesn't have to happen today. But I like to tell my students always, going into things with the notion that it could happen, if we tell ourselves things can't happen, then they won't. If we tell ourselves that we can do it, then we can. This is a good prep for headstands. And we'll inhale for a half lift. Exhale, see if we can fold. And let's walk to frame our left foot, pointing that foot straight ahead, maybe shortening our stance a little bit, spinning that back foot flat. So we have warrior two feet again, heel to arch alignment. Inhale, using the core to rise. Gaze is over that left middle finger now. And we'll find triangle again. Inhale, straightening that front leg. Exhale, reaching that left hand until it can't reach any further. We're sending the hips back until they don't go any further. And then we fold in. Finding the mat, the inside of the shin or the ankle, reaching those right fingertips towards the sky, gazing towards the hand. If binding is a part of your practice, you can bring that hand. You can half bind by bringing the right hand and grabbing the thigh here. And you can stay here. You can leave that hand reaching the left hand underneath, interlacing the fingers, straightening the leg, trying to open the chest, lifting the gaze. Bending into that front knee for an extended side angle with a bind, releasing the hand either to the inside of the foot, the outside of the foot, or we can bring our forearm to the thigh. Bending in here, making sure that the knees over the ankle, reaching our right arm up and over. Angela, I'm challenging you here. I know you can do some of these things, so I'm giving you some harder poses. You're welcome. And then from here, let's find that warrior two. Let's drop that right hand, reaching the left arm back. Reverse warrior. And then we'll bring our hands back to the hips, pigeon toeing the feet, inhaling, Finding length, exhaling, folding forward. Second time here, might be different. Inhale, half lift, exhale, fold. Sending the crown of the head to the mat. Let's inhale, half lift, walk it over to the front of the room, framing that foot. Let's find the flow. And let's inhale, lifting the right leg. Exhale, bringing that right knee to 
the right elbow. If this hurts, being mindful, we can always drop that knee once we get there and hold here, engaging the core. Exhale, sweep it back. Inhale, crossing it over. Maybe we extend the leg. Exhale, sweep it back. Inhale, knee to nose, crunch it in, hover and hold. Exhale, sweep it back. Maybe opening the hip here, bringing the heel to the glute, knee to the sky. And let's return our right foot down. Inhale, lifting the left leg. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Maybe dropping the knee down, holding here. Inhale, sweep it back. Exhale, cross it over. Maybe extend the leg. Exhale, sweep it back. Inhale, knee to nose, hover and hold. Exhale, sweep it back. Bringing the feet to meet. If you want to go through one more final vinyasa. And we'll meet in child's pose. Just coming back to our breath. Coming back to your intention if you set one. We'll inhale coming on to the hands and the knees. Let's set the hips off to one side, bringing the legs around. And Angela has killer abs. So let's do some abs because I know she likes them or wants them. You might not like them but you do them, obviously. So let's find boat. So in Navasana, boat pose, we start out bringing the toes to the mat. Now, a lot of people point the feet if that hurts your tootsies. We can just lightly set the toes on the mat instead. Using the core, we wanna lift the chest, lift the back. The back is super, super flat here. Then we can begin to lift the legs. We can begin to lift the arms, but we don't want to collapse. And a way to figure out if your torso is lifted or not, if you have a block at home, using your block, you can sit up on your block. And this will help you keep a straight back because it's really hard to fall backwards when you're sitting on the block. From here, you can exhale. This is quite hard on this block. Finding a half boat, inhale to rise. Exhale, use that core to stabilize. Inhale, coming back up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower. And inhale to rise. Removing your block. Holding in your boat for just a moment. Maybe trying to extend the legs. Maybe reaching for the toes. Using that core to keep you lifted. And when you're done, let's just send the legs long. We're going to find that seated forward fold again, Paschimottanasana. So from here, we want to flex through the feet. Flexing the muscles of the legs, engaging, lifting through the spine, exhale, fold forward. See if this is any different from the beginning of class. Maybe inhale, half lift. Exhale, see if we can fold that belly button in to the thighs. Trying to soften here, not holding any tension. 
Inhale to rise. Let's find Baddha Konasana, bringing the soles of the feet together. You might know of this as butterfly. Inhaling, lengthening, exhaling, folding forward. Inhale, coming back up. Let's keep one of those legs bent. Let's bring, see if we can bring the foot up into the hip crease. If not, you can bring the foot on the inside of the thigh. But this is a half Lord of the Fishes variation here. We'll inhale, lifting the arms up overhead. Exhale, twist. Looking over the left shoulder if we can. Flexing through that foot if it doesn't hurt. Inhale through center, let's get a counter twist. Inhale through center, we're gonna find a variation of Janu Shirshasana here. Option to just fold forward and reach for the toes. If you'd like, you can take that right hand reaching to bind with the big toe. You don't have to get there. If your hand's at the small of your back, that's fine. Eventually, you'll be able to reach for your toe. Then we take our left hand reaching for the toe. And again, it doesn't have to reach. You can be at the shin. You can be at the small of your back and be here. Maybe you want to twist open here, gazing over the right shoulder. Taking it to your edge, knowing that your edge and my edge and everybody else's edges are all different. Our edge is the point of the pose where we feel the best stretch. Maybe even a little discomfort, but there's no pain. If we were to push any farther, there would be pain. That's when we want to back off of our edge. So being mindful of your edge and your yoga practice. Releasing that. Sending that leg long, we'll bring the left foot either to the thigh for Janu Shirshasana or up here. We'll find a half Lord of the Fishes almost variation. Inhaling up, twisting, almost hooking that elbow to the thigh here. Twisting, looking over that left shoulder. Inhaling up, finding our counter twist. Inhaling through center, option to reach around the low back. You can just reach forward for the toes. You don't have to reach the toes. Maybe you're just here today. Maybe you reach for the small of the back. Maybe you can reach for the big toe. Maybe you reach the right hand for the right big toes. Maybe you wanna find a twist here looking over the left shoulder. that let's come on to our back lowering and when the head reaches the mat hugging the knees into the chest for apanasana rocking from side to side here Now let's find a reclined pigeon here. So bringing the right sole of the foot or the right ankle to the left thigh here. You can flex through the foot if it doesn't hurt. If it hurts to flex, just relax the foot. And you can bring that left knee in to stretch out that hip flexor. You can take the hands and bring them around the thigh or around the shin. 
but you don't have to. Releasing that, finding our reclined pigeon or Supta Ekapada Rajakapatasana. That's a mouthful. And then releasing, just hugging those knees into the chest one final time. And then we're going to use the last 10 minutes of our practice to set up for Shavasana. So Shavasana is traditionally done. We bring our feet to the outer corners of our mat. We let the feet splay out to the sides, soften in here, reclining on the mat, rolling the shoulders down the back, letting the palms face up at our sides and closing the eyes here. Giving yourself permission here to take this 10 minutes. Shavasana symbolizes the death of our practice. It's a time for meditation and mindfulness, focusing on the breath here for 10 minutes, focusing solely on inhaling and exhaling. Settling in, and as you settle in for your Shavasana, I want to thank you for watching this video today. I want to thank you for practicing with me. And I'd like to share with you the mantra that I use in all of my classes. Loka Samashta Sukino Bhavantu. And that means I wish happiness and freedom to all living things. And may the words, thoughts, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to happiness and freedom for all. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Namaste.